Australia presents Pick a Box. And here's your host, Bob Dyer. Yes, indeedy. Howdy, customers. Welcome to BP Pick a Box. And a welcome from Dahl, who will tell us what the score is. Well, Miss Lorraine Berman has won over $5,000 worth of lovely BP prizes, and tonight she has that terrible decision to make, so here she is, Miss Lorraine Berman. Thanks, Dahl. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, welcome back. And Dolly says it's a terrible decision to make. It's not a terrible one. It's a very anxious one for you. Last one. week, you picked the Hemi Pacer. Yes. yes, it was your very last box and the show was nearly over and all that rush was on and I didn't ask you what you were going to do, or you was going to do, which is correct, George, you was, you were, you were, you were going to do. <laughs> Thank you, George. Well, anyway, let me tell you, I think, I think we ought to tell you that the car you've won is the Hemi Pacer by Valiant and you're having a look at it there. I think I ought to tell you that the Chrysler Valiant cars, all of them, have an Australian content of over 95%. It's the result of Chrysler's new engine production plant near Adelaide. It costs $36 million. That's where they make the sensational six-cylinder Hemi engine that's in the new VG range of Valiants. Incidentally, Sterling Moss, there he is standing beside one, put this car through its paces. And if he doesn't know motor cars, no one knows motor cars. The powerful pacer is available to every box picker every week. And you traded a box. Actually, it was the Wolf home workshop. Mm -hmm. And being Miss Lorraine Berman, I know why you traded it. You have no use for a sapphire drill and all that sort of thing. <laughs> so you traded it and up came the Hemi Pacer. Now we have to ask you a question. What are you going to do? Well, Bob, I've given it a lot of thought and I feel that I came here with nothing and I have now a great array of prizes. So I'm going on. Well, how about that? Lorraine, thank you. Congratulations on a very nice little speech, and I, I can see you have thought about it. What would you have done, customer? Would you have taken it and left the show, or would you have gone on? Yes, and... Leave, leave. Oh, they're all leavers. Pikers? Okay, Lorraine, we'd, you, uh, Dolly has your opponent who was ready to come up after you, and it's the same person. I don't know whether it's a lady or a gent, but from World Book Encyclopedia, and you have at stake your Hemi Pacer by Valiant. From World Book, what was the profession of Sir, of Sir Joshua Reynolds, his profession? He was a painter. That's right, a portrait painter to be exact. What was the name of the Australian Governor General who immediately preceded Viscount Dunrossel? Lord Delisle. No, it was Sir William Slim. That's a miss. Which country's ruler was assassinated in March 1881? Which country's ruler? The United States of America. No, it was the Tsar Alexander II. George, come on the microphone. I think there was we'll an American, have, we'll talk to George. American president. Would you say that's a ruler? Well, this is what I took it. Um, well, a ruler. Who was it, George? A, a, was it Gar McKinley Gar Garfield? Garfield. Mm -hmm. Ruler. Oh, well, ruler. Hmm. <clears throat> well, George... I'd be big-hearted, Mom. Uh, George, are you, I love to be big-hearted. We'll check this out, and I'm sure it's correct. Yes. But... Uh, a president is a ruler in a broad sense of the word. This is how I took it. That's how you took yes. it? And that was Garfield. Yes. Thank you, George Black, ladies and gentlemen, who is my very competent outsider. <clears throat> we'll, we'll check that out. But also, Tsar Alexander II of Russia was, uh, uh, was assassinated that same year. Is that right, George? Yes, okay. All right, that's good enough for me because uh, you took it as a president. We'll go on with that. On what continent, we'll call that a, a, a win, on what continent is Timbuktu? Africa. Of course it is. A fifth one for three out of five, and this is your favorite score, isn't it? Of what country is a Magyar a native? Magyar. Hungary. Hungary it is, and you got three out of five. Boy, oh boy. All right, doll, who's coming up? Mrs. Jill Garner, she was an office worker before her marriage. Mrs. Jill Garner. Jill, hello and welcome to the show. Jill, when we come to a certain question in this round of questions, uh, we're going to give you uh, an alternative which we gave her. But we'll talk about that when we come to it. That's why it took us so long. We're going to have an icebreaker now. We have six months supply of Colgate Dental Cream for our little icebreaker here. That's the dental cream that gives you that ring of confidence. The first one that calls out two words that rhyme and describe is serious Red Indian Warrior. Grave, brave. Oh, you are very grave and very brave. And that, where were you, Jill? Lost. 
<laughs> you were lost. Well, you have six months' supply of Colgate Dental Cream. There we are. All right, now, are you ready, Jill, for the... Uh, uh, number one, there's no argument about this one. What was the... Pro By the way, you know what she has at stake, don't you? Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, if you defeat her and go on, it'll be back in the boxes next week and you can win it, so don't pull your punches. Isn't that right, Lorraine? All right. What was the profession of Sir Joshua Reynolds? He was an artist. Well, a portrait yes. painter. Well, an artist. He was certainly an artist. A portrait painter would be more exact, and that's correct. What was the name of the Australian Governor General who immediately preceded Viscount Dunrussell? Yeah, Sir William Slim. That's one she missed, and that's correct. <laughs> so you have, you have two there now, I think. You got the first one, and that's the second one. So you are two. Which country's ruler was assassinated in March? Now, this will give you some latitude on. I'll tell you why. When I say ruler, I'm going to say the head of a state, right? The, which country's ruler or head of state was assassinated in March 1881? <clears throat> um, that would be one of the U.S. presidents. Garfield? Well, it doesn't matter. I want you to say which country and oh, you said United America. United States. I mean, the United States will pay that. It was absolutely correct. And the reason we say that is because by ruler, broadly, we know that we didn't differentiate enough between ruler and president because a president is a ruler of a country. In a broad sense, Russian, Alexander II was also an ass assassinated. So you have one to go to tie her score. Yes? You got four. You did get four out of five. She has a one to go, thank you, Lorraine, to tie your score. Are you ready? Uh, Jill, you have two questions to go. One more will tie her score. On what continent is Timbuktu? The African and continent. And you've tied her score. It's four out of four. We have one question to go, and we have the Hemi Pacer at stake. Lorraine, you're a good sport, and you uh, put it on the line, didn't you? I'm so glad you both gave the same answer to that the question, which uh, we hadn't worded too well. That wasn't one of George's wording questions there. I must say that, George. Here's the fifth one, and you can win with this, Jill. <clears throat> you have 10 seconds and no more to answer. Of what country is a Magyar, a native? Uh, Hungary. And we have a winner. Oh, my goodness. That's the first time it's ever happened in Pickerbox. Oh, Jill, first of all, I'm glad, Sorry, I'm glad you, you can win the Hemi Pacer next week. She forfeits it. It's the first time. I think it's the first time a car has ever been forfeited in Pick a Box. Certainly the first time the Hemi Pacer has ever been forfeited. You elected to go on. She beat you by one point. Lorraine, you are so wonderful. Minus the Hemi Pacer, you've won an awful lot of wonderful I prizes. Have. I have. I have no regrets. Oh, she's sweet. She's wonderful. I'll tell you what. Jill, we'll come back to you in a minute. Let me just say to you, Lorraine, that uh, we, all of Australia, congratulate you for the, the good sportsmanship in going on and the good sportsmanship in taking your loss the way you did. You lost the Hemi Pacer. Maybe she'll win it for you next week. You'll take her for a ride if you do, won't you, Jill? Yes, indeed. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jill. It was wonderful having her. Wasn't it, customer? She's grand. All right, now it's time for you to pick your first box, Jill. And there they are there. What would you like? Of course, you can't pick the Hemi Pacer or any of the prizes she has picked, but there are plenty of other boxes. They'll all be back next week. Um, number 16. Number 16 is the BP Coralite Kerosene Box, a popular wintertime BP product. What's in box number 16? Let's see. Oh, a beautiful HMV Audio 10. Oh, this is a beautiful HMV prize. Let me tell you about it before you tell us. This is the new superb HMV Audio 10 Solid State Stereogram. It turns your lounge room into a concert hall. Every whisper of sound becomes alive when reproduced on a HMV 10, Studio 10 Stereogram. Well, you get a lot of H EMI recordings. What are you going to do? Should she take it or trade it, customers? It's, it's, it's a very valuable box. Do you want to take it or trade it? You'll take it? She's taking it, and it's an HMV box. You also win a selection of EMI popular and or classical recordings to go with your Audio 10 Solid State. Isn't that wonderful? You happy about that? Very happy. Okay. Now, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's come back. Will you stay with us for a minute? Yes. Well, customers, I hope you'll do that too because we have a message from BP. And then more pick a box.
Well, there you are, customers. If BP tell you that, believe me, you can believe them. Jill, are you ready for some more questions? Yes, All right, away we go. From World Book Encyclopedia, what is the more familiar name given to the friendly islands of the Pacific? F um, Fiji Islands. No, it's Tonga. Oh. That's a miss. What is the name of the longest river in France? The Seine. No, it's the Loire, oh. 620 miles approximately. Come on now, from World Book, which berry is commonly used to flavor gin? Juniper berry. That's right. Now we got started. Number four, to what country do the Pacific Islands of New Caledonia belong? New Caledonia. France. Right you are. Now you're on your way. Here's another one to give you three out of five. Name the family to which Romeo of Romeo and Juliet belonged. Name the family to which Montague. Romeo. Montague is right. Juliet was a Capulet. That's right. You got three out of five. Hey, Kate, oh, what's cooking? Rob Moffat. He's an advertising agency account executive, and he was a radio announcer. Rob Moffat. Thank you, doll. Would you give us a weather report, please, Rob? Bob, I hope it's rather sunny tomorrow. Oh, Before good. All right. You're now with an advertising agency. That's right. Which one? Jackson Wayne. Well, Jackson Wayne handled the Qantas account. That would be right, Bob. Yes. Gives us a chance to talk about the 50th anniversary. You've been working true. hard on that? My very well, we have. Well, I'm glad you're telling Australia that it is their 50th. They're one of the oldest airlines in the world. Matter of fact, they're the second oldest airline in the world, second only to KLM. Well, you see, not? you have it from the horse's mouth. Hi, yeah. horse. <laughs> hey, with that mane, you look a little bit like a horse, too. I'm only Thanks, kidding. Francis. <laughs> Never mind. It's Rob, isn't it? That's correct. Okay, Rob, away we go. And uh, let's have a little icebreaker. Six months supply of Colgate Dental Cream. I don't know if that's one of your accounts. Don't tell me. But no, that's Patterson's. I remember that's from right. a long that's time right. ago. Yeah, Bill Farnsworth, and I should remember. Colgate Dental Cream, six months supply. For the first one to call out two words that rhyme and describe a more ancient stone. Oh, you are quick, isn't she? Oh, I'll say she is. She is very quick. Uh, that was Jill. Jill came up there. You have six months supply of Colgate Dental Cream for that ring of confidence. Okay. Now, she has answered these questions. She's done fairly well. But, Rob, anybody can beat anybody on this show. World Book Encyclopedia want to know what is the more familiar name given to the friendly islands of the Pacific? All right. No, you got me there, Bob. Friendly Isles? Um, no. Time gone. Tonga. That's oh. Queen Salati, the late and all that, isn't it, George? That's right, Tonga, the Friendly Island. What is the name of the longest river in France, Rob? It would have to be the Seine. No, it would be the Loire. Wasn't the Seine. Mm -hmm. Now, she missed up to there, so right, keep your right, pecker right. up, as they say, from World Book Encyclopedia. Which berry is commonly used to flavor gin? I certainly hope it isn't curare. Um, Berry, flavoured gin. Berry. Hurry. No? It's no. the juniper berry. <sighs> the juniper berry. Uh, you can't do it, Rob. You but you know what you've won? Something that an advertising man will enjoy mm. and use with pleasure. A Schaefer Triumph gold pen and ballpoint set. Thank you for coming, Rob. A fellow in the advertising business. And boy, I guarantee you they do a great job. Jill, that's for you now. You know it is time for you to pick a box. And there go the Westminster Chimes. Pick one. Number 19. BP box number 19 is the BP Dizolium box for high-speed diesel engines. What's in box number 19? It could be, and it's a beautiful box. World Book Encyclopedia. Oh, boy, World Book Encyclopedia. I, I, don't, think, I don't think I'll even ask you if you're going to trade that because it's a 24-volume international edition. It's the world's largest selling reference library. That must mean something. And it's the most up-to-date, the most colorful. And we use it, George and I, exclusively. Don't we, George? Right. In Picklebox, we do. It has even, it, it's so recent that it, it, for some time, has had the moon landing and the space travel and all about the astronauts. Should she take the world book or leave it, or rather take it or trade it for another box? Which? Right. Take it. Right. You're going to take it or trade it? I'm going to take it. Right. She's going to take it, naturally. <laughs> Anybody who wouldn't take World Book don't care about knowledge, and obviously you do. All right, I'll tell you, we'll have more pick a box in just a second, but customers, a reminder right now, you know, two weeks from tonight, we begin a return match between Evelyn Lynch, you remember Evelyn, and Mervyn Vinson, 
Mervyn Vincent is our grand champion of pick a box. Remember, we had a, a, a very thorough and wonderful time trying to break a tie between them. We couldn't do it, and we called it a draw, and they split the prize money of $2,500. We couldn't separate them. They were in Wales savings accounts. And by the way, customers, at the Wales, you don't need a lot of money to be an investor. People in all walks of life go to the Wales because of the number of different investment services available. You can be a butcher, a plumber, a pop singer. You can be retired. Perhaps you're a dentist or an actress. All these people went along to the Wales, and this is what my little friend at the Wales had to say. No matter what walk of life you're in, if it's investment, the Wales can help you. The Wales? Yes. The Bank of New South Wales has a number of investment services. One is right for you, and you, and you. If it's investment, you can bank on the Wales. Yes, indeed, you certainly can. Hey, that, that was a cute little cartoon there, wasn't it? But it tells us the truth. Are you ready now for some more questions, Jill? All right, you're defending your box from World Book Encyclopedia. Of course, the prize that you're defending right yes. now. Ah, oh, what, from what language does the word delta, as applied to a river's delta, come? Greek. That's right, it's the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. What town in the North Island of New Zealand suffered a severe earthquake in 1931? Um, Wellington. No, it was Napier. A severe earthquake, very famous one. And yes, a, well, no, I'm sorry, familiar. that's a miss there. You have one. Name the oldest existing military body of guards in England. I'll give you some latitude on this. The oldest existing military body of guards in England. And the beef eaters? Yeah, the, the yeoman of the guard. Of that's right. That's yes. quite right. The beef eaters would do the yeoman of the guard to be exact, but its members are called beef eaters. In Greek mythology, the centaur is half man and half what animal? Of course. Right you are. And now for, for four out of five, who was emperor of the Mongols? Who was emperor of the Mongols at the time of the visit of Marco Polo to the Orient? Kiblakhan. And you have four out of five. That's a very, very fine score. Now, who is coming up now? Morris Johnston, and he's a sailor with the RAF, and also he's a writer, and he's just taken up sailing as a hobby. Morris Johnston. Thank you, doll. Hi, Morris. Hi, Morris, what does she mean you're a sailor with the RAF, R-A-A-F? R-A-N. Well, oh, R-A-N. Well, Australian Navy, yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of difference, doesn't yeah. it? Well, we're going to have a little icebreaker here now. Six months supply of, uh, was it Colgate Dental Cream? That's right. Now, for the first one, who gives me two words that rhyme and describe an active man. Now, the man part would be an American slang word, the equivalent to the Australian bloke. A swear guy? What did you say? An a active. And come on, you're still in this. Yeah. just not quite right. What did you say? A swy guy. A uh, swy wouldn't be active. No. I don't know that word. But you're getting close. You might beat her to it. Come on, Morris. I'm trying to think. Uh, An active guy is right. Come on, both of you. A sly guy. A sly guy. Jill, you gave him the clue that gave him six months' supply of Colgate Dental Cream. It'll right. give you that ring yeah. of confidence, old boy. A spry guy. Sly. An active. Yeah, that's yes, right. That's uh, and, well, I said uh, yeah. sly there. Instead sly? Spraying. Well, act sly. That's not right. No, it's not really. Oh, hey, he's a nice guy, too. You, you're, you're a nice guy. Let's do another one. Yeah. Let's do another one. All right, we have plenty of them here. Another icebreaker. Now, this time, I want two words that rhyme and describe. I'm sorry, that was my fault. A sly guy, it rhymes so well, I thought it was right. But spry, active, that's what I wanted. A Nipponese geographical chart. An easy one. Jap map. A Jap map. And <laughs> for being a good sport, she beat you to it. Jill, you have six months supply of Colgate Dental Cream. And now, for you, Morris, the same five questions she had, she did fairly well from World Book. And that's what she's defending, by the way, World Book Encyclopedia. What is the more familiar name given to the friendly islands of the Pacific? Yes, yeah, that's the are. one. Hmm? Hey, oh, oh, did I give you the wrong? Them, yeah. Yes, we've had Well, them. thank you. Oh, hey, George, I got more help than I can get by with here tonight. I didn't put them far enough away. That's the other set. Sorry, Morris, your questions are, from what language does the word delta, as applied to a river's delta, come? From what language? French? No, it's the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. Oh, yeah, 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 now, yeah, you know yeah. something, Morris? She had four out of five, so don't miss any more. Mm. What town in the North Island of New Zealand suffered a severe earthquake in 1931? Oakland. It was Napier. Oh, I'm sorry. We want you to have a Schaefer Triumph gold pen and pencil gift set, and that's for you. Thank you for coming. But, Jill, you're going to pick another BP box. So to the tune of the Westminster Chimes, pick a BP box. 
number 26. Box number 26. That's the BP Comprox box. The economical detergent available in bulk from BP service stations. What's in box number 26? I don't know, and now I know it's the Frigidaire freezer refrigerator. Oh, what a fabulous box. You, why did you pick the last one before this? It was the World Book Encyclopedia. And now you have picked this beautiful box. Oh, it's a lovely looking Frigidaire there. I'll tell you a little bit about it before I decide whether you may have a new one. You, you may not want it. The Frigidaire Frostproof Combination Freezer Refrigerator, it's, it's only Frigidaire that offers so many wonderful new features. 17 cubic feet of roomy space, separate freezer compartment, the magic of no frost. You never have to defrost. General Motors product. Should she take it or trade it, customers? You're going to take it or trade it? I guess I'd better take it. My family's up there saying take it. Are you saying take it, family? Good. Yeah, take it. Okay, you're taking the Frigidaire Frostproof Freezer Refrigerator, and it's a magnificent prize, and that's yours. I'll tell you what, we'll come back in just a second. Will you hang on? Customers, right now, it's BP Newsreel time. This week, our BP Road takes us behind the scenes of all those fantastic fireworks displays seen at gala festivals throughout the world. 30 miles north of Sydney at Box Hill is the largest fireworks manufacturer in the Southern Hemisphere, Harry Howard and Sons. The Howards have featured in every major fireworks display in Australia, New Zealand, and the surrounding Pacific area since 1919. I guess you could say business is really booming. Safety is not forgotten. In fact, the workman's safety is the family's main concern and the manufacturing process takes place in 40 separate buildings as a precaution against fire and explosion. We are there supplying BP Super to power their delivery vans as well as providing a variety of BP products used in the manufacture of the fireworks. Here's a case where man beats machine as great care is needed when filling the cardboard casings with explosive pellets. With machinery, there's a high fire risk, and one slight mechanical error could set off a chain reaction affecting fireworks displays for months to come. Can you imagine Guy Fawkes Night without fireworks? Wouldn't it be a fizzer? These star shells are usually the star attraction at every display, and after being carefully packed and loaded, they are sent to festivals near and far. Just imagine you're at a fiesta right now and suddenly the Howard's Color Spectacular explodes into action. For miles around, the night is set alight with a blaze of brilliant color to the delights of the crowd. From Harry, Sid and Liz, it's their way of saying, have fun folks and all the best from BP. Bang, bang, boom, boom. That's a beautiful sight. Fireworks, and those people do a great job with it. Okay, customers, it's time for pick a box, and let's hurry on and see if we can get another box picked. Uh, Jill, your first box was? The audio. Uh, the HMV, HMV stereo HMV. ramp. Your second box was? The world book. Encyclopedia, yes, yes authority, and you're, you're defending now? The Frigidaire. Frigidaire frostproof. Freezer refrigerator. Okay, from World Book, in what country did Charles Lindbergh land after his historic non-stop transatlantic flight in 1927? In what country did he France. land? France. Right, he did. How did Virginia, USA, get its name? After the Virgin Queen, Elizabeth, Elizabeth the I. First. Absolutely. What ology is the study of the nature of function of the mind? What ology is the study of the nature and function of the mind? Psychology. Psychology it is from the Greek psyche, I think it is. Give me the name of the only Englishman ever elected pope. The name of the Englishman. Elected Pope. Urban. No. What did you say? Urban. No, his but name was Adrian. It was Adrian the Fourth. Uh, Nicholas Breakspeare. That's a miss. Five. What is the profession or occupation of a cartographer? Uh, what, what was that, Bob? Again? Yeah. What is the profession? We'll stop the time. What is the profession or occupation of a cartographer? A cartographer, a uh, map maker. We had a Jap map earlier. Yes. Didn't you? That yes. brings you on for four out of five, and that's very nice indeed. Doll, who's coming up now? Mrs. Susan Fox. She attended Teachers College in Wagga and she's a Brownie Pack assistant. Mrs. Susan Fox. Thank you, Doll. Hi, Susan. Susan, what did Dolly say you were there at last, the last uh, bit? A Brownie Pack assistant. A what? A Brownie Pack assistant. Isn't that good? That's kind of like young Boy Scouts, isn't it? Yes, they call them a tawny owl. Girls. <laughs> oh, well, that's very cute indeed, and it's a very nice thing. Let's have a, an icebreaker real quick. Uh, the first one to call out two words that rhyme and describe a brave, titled lady. 
a brave title. A game dame. A game dame is right, and we broke the ice. And six months supply more for you of Colgate Dental Cream. Let's go quickly, Susan. In what country did Charles Lindbergh land after his historic nonstop transatlantic flight in 1927? America. No, he landed in France. He went from America. Now, you mustn't miss any more, Susan. How did Virginia, USA, get its name? Virginia, USA. Oh dear, it was from the Virgin Queen, Elizabeth I, Virginia. Well, she got four out of five. We want you to have a Schaefer Triumph gold pen and pencil gift set. And thank you very much for coming. She was nice, but she just slipped up there. Well, we only have one more prize, one more to go, Jill. One more box and you win your first bonus box, which is the Hawk Opal box. Would you be proud to win that? Try for it next week. Incidentally, all the prizes will be back to Hemi Pacer and everything next week. So will you come back? Okay. Customers, this is kind of holiday time for a lot of you. Let me warn you and remind you and beg you, please don't sit on your seatbelt. It's most uncomfortable. Wear it. That's what it's there for, and it's there to save your life, perhaps. Your seatbelts are there to be worn, so wear them. In other words, belt up before you start up. And please let BP bring out the best in your car. It all adds up to happy driving. Customers, see you next week. Our contestants fly TAA the friendly way and from overseas by Qantas, your kind of people, Australia's round-the-world airline. They drive a car from the friendly Avis team and stay at the North Sydney Travel Lodge with one of Sydney's finest views. Bob suits are by Anthony Squires and Dolly Sportswear by Delta. BP Pickerbox was directed by Philip Berry. Presented each week by BP Australia and is a Bob Dyer TV production.